To download the Admin Center, we need to go to the Microsoft Evaluation Center. So I'm going to just pull up my browser, and in my browser, I'm going to go to microsoft.com slash eval center. That is the same place the ISO file for server 2019 was downloaded from. When I click on products here, you'll see our Windows Server 2019. We already downloaded that. That's in the list. My Windows Admin Center is also in the list here. Now, if you don't see this here, you can just search uh, for it because they rearrange these options often. But I'm going to click on Windows Admin Center. And it will simply have you under this get started for free. It'll just have you continue and fill out this registration form. And you can use bogus information. It does not have to be your actual name or phone number. But fill that out, click continue, and then it will download the MSI for the admin center for you. Now, just for the sake of time, I have mine downloaded already. So in my downloads folder, I have the Windows Admin Center. I'm just going to double click that. The install begins, so I will accept the terms, and I'll choose next. It says, do I want to send diagnostic data to Microsoft? You can say required, required and optional, but I'm going to leave that on the default, the required diag data. Do you want to use Microsoft Update? I will say no. And I'll click next. Now it says, allow Admin Center to modify this machine's trusted host settings. That's so you can connect to other machines. So we want to do that and use WinRM over HTTPS only. I'm not going to select that. That's part of remote management, this WimRM, which stands for Windows Remote Management. But any of these settings we can easily modify after the fact as well. But we are just accepting the defaults. I'll click Next. This is going to use port 443. That is fine, and it's also going to generate its own SSL certificate. That is what we want. And I'll just click Install. That is done, so I'll just click Finish. Now that the install is complete, I'm going to pull up my browser. And in my browser, I'm just going to type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost. Now it does give me this, your connection is not private, but I'm going to click advanced and proceed to localhost. The reason it gave me that message is because this generated its own SSL certificate where I'm not running a web server or deploying certificates in our little virtual environment right now. So when you see that message, just ignore that. We know this is actually secure because it's hosted on this machine. It's not some website on the internet you actually browse to. Well, with this, what I can do now is add other servers in my environment. You could simply click the name of other servers. If you are in a domain environment already, you could search Active Directory. Now, if I go back to add, You'll see I could add Windows PCs if you have clusters in your environment, like uh, file server clusters, Hyper-V clusters. If you are connected to Azure, you could add Azure Virtual Machines here as well. Now, what's neat about this, if I click this gear icon over here for settings, under settings, you'll see this extensions. If I select extensions, it shows you every extension you could load. So you'll see Active Directory. There's an Azure File Sync. There are some things for Dell products, uh, DHCP, DNS, file sharing, Fujitsu, HPE, uh, Lenovo. Lots of products show up. You can add those extensions and you can now manage those products directly from this web page. So I could manage all of my servers, all of my virtual machines, directly from this page itself. Now I'm going to click on the Admin Center. Now the way we're set up right now, I'm just going to click OK to close this message. I'm going to click on my server. So this is actually on my host machine. But you can see, when I look at the overview, 
from this web page, you could restart, shut down. You could see the computer name, the operating system, memory, uh, manufacturer. You could view CPU, memory, uh, Ethernet, that's network traffic. Several things related to Azure. We look at those later. But I could see the installed applications on the machine. I could view local users and groups on the machine. You could even add local users and groups directly from here to any machine. Now, the way we're set up now is in a minimalist way because I'm only looking at settings that are on the local machine. But you could add a server, a Windows 10 machine to this view, and you would be looking at local users on a remote machine, and you would be able to manage those directly from this web page on any machine in your environment. So this is truly a form of remote management. I can view network settings. You could look at performance monitoring statistics. You could launch PowerShell if you wanted to run commands. You could look at the registry. You could even use this to remote desktop to a remote machine. I can see which roles and features are loaded. This would give me the ability to install or uninstall any role or any feature on any of my servers. So if I wanted to load DNS, DHCP, any of those, you could simply click on any of those and install. You could view schedule tasks, services, storage, uh, virtual machines. So this is incredibly powerful. Now, the most useful thing about this, all these things we see here, when you click add and you add a server, you would see all those options for every server you add into this console. So truly a form of remote administration strictly based on this web page, which is really all the Windows Admin Center is, a collective of web tools that you access through the browser. We will use this a lot throughout the course and we'll actually install this on several machines uh, throughout the course. So you could just manage this from your Windows 10 client. You could have it installed on server. A lot of configuration possibilities.